Hi, I'm Stephen Button. So everything's very connected here. So let me show you um, an example. For instance, I was working with a client once and she came to me with a love problem and I knelt down to touch her feet. And as we cleared what was in the left foot, it just looked kind of bunched up to me. She shared, well, tears started to flow out and she shared that she hadn't grieved the loss of her mother when she was eight or thereabouts. So can you imagine we, we could store a piece of ungrieved emotion in a foot? The whole body is riddled with these kinds of uh, profound mysteries. This is why everything is so connected. And then a few weeks later, we did the same process with the right foot. And then she, she, tears flowed and she shared that she hadn't been able to grieve her father who she lost a few years later. After we cleared those two pieces, um, their relationship challenge she came to me with was changed dramatically. Like she met someone who could meet her and they fell in love. And this was after a narcissistic relationship with a former husband that had kind of been dragging on for 10 years. So let me give you a little example of this. So this is the body, obviously. <clears throat> This is kind of backwards for me, so let's see. <laughs> what I shared here is this is the masculine. This is the feminine. The left side. So when we clear this foot, this is something like foundation. The feet are, what do you stand for? How solid are you? And you can do this with masculine or feminine. Now when I do the postural analysis, I do th the three body centers. Obviously head, heart, which is emotion, pelvis, which is instinct. These all have to be in a line physically and I kind of walk people through how to do that. Now we start with the feet because you can spread the toes your feet have meridians that connect to the earth that kind of charges your body. And we align the feet parallel. This is called standing in flow. For now, I'm just kind of breaking down some of what the pieces of the body symbolically mean. Like I had another client, she came with another relationship challenge and she had just injured her shoulder and her ankle. What happened? Her partner had just left and she was reaching up into the closet for some of his belongings and she tripped and sprained her ankle and hurt her shoulder. So this is something like reaching back in the right side, trying to, um, the right side masculine, into the back, which is the past, and then falling and having that injury. So there are no accidents. This is what I realized when my neck was broken in the ocean. These things are all so intertwined and interwoven. That's what I want you to just start to get out of this. Another client, this is the heart center, right? This is the sternum armor, like armor over the heart. Sorry if you can't read this, just take my word for that. <laughs> it says sternum. Um, I'm using this new tablet that has a very interesting pen feature. So she was at a, a wedding party and she realized her partner had been cheating on her and while she was leaving, she crashed the car and her sternum cracked against the steering wheel. So a literal cracked sternum, literal broken heart so much of that energy emanating like it attracted this this kind of brute force and that's what happened to me with my neck in a different way so the neck right um, communication voice the chakra that's there but also connecting the head and the body if you're living in your head uh oh crash ocean wave boom whatever it is You'll, and, a, and a blow to the head like that is often seen as a call to shamanism, which is very fascinating. And as I said, like we go from uh, fracture to rapture. Now this illustration is from 2013 and the Flow into Joy Journey book I created to work through with clients. Now I've kind of, um, I'm kind of altering some of these to work through clients with rapture on love uh, patterns. So as we go from fracture to rapture, 
this fracture, let's, oops. Interesting. Let's say for me it was this broken neck, right? C5. I could find meaning in that too. Everything. And um, this is not the original fracture. This always threads back to here and then to here and to here. So as I was doing birth work, I saw that like my head had slammed into the pelvic floor when I was born in this rebirthing process. And, and about 10 years later, I was wrestling with a friend and he had slammed me into this linoleum floor in the same spot. There was just a lot of these where I was living a certain path and I needed to be called back to another trajectory here <laughs> okay more aliveness more um, rapture ecstatic states so being soft moving softly is the knees now you can be soft and strong most people lock their knees if you lock your knees it locks your pelvis and then this energy can't flow through here which this is the psoas spiritual conduit in tibetan uh, the seat of the ego Now you can reach in there and touch those and all kinds of kundalini type energy, sexual energy, traumatic energy flows because what's stored in there is uh, fight or flight energy that was not mobilized. They call it the seat of the ego in Tibetan because it's whatever you've been holding on to. It's like if you're holding on to something, if you try to sit and meditate, there's that pulling. And it's, it's the longest muscle, little, I think it's the longest muscle in the body perhaps other than the sartorius which goes like this. And it runs under the viscera, affects digestion and all these things. I have countless stories about releasing things there. I also, with clients at a distance, we use a TRE. So when this releases, it, there's a vibrating trauma release response. Now, if animals in the wild are tranquilized, when they wake up, they vibrate and run into the wild. That's how they release their trauma. When I broke my neck, I vibrated. I thought I was cold, but it was 80 degrees. I was in my bathing suit on the beach in San Diego shaking. So I was releasing that trauma. If you don't let someone release that trauma, they sometimes die. So TRE is a way to facilitate trauma release exercise is, uh, is something that someone named Dr. Bercelli invented to help people release trauma on a larger scale. So I, work, I, I walk clients through that and some other practices. There's also somatic experiencing Peter Levine. So, so, um, the left feminine right mask and this is flexibility too like being willing to kneel being willing to surrender like knee problems surrender what it means to be a female what it means to be a male now we can store this is we can store things in between these ribs. This is our armor and it's supposed to be soft. These ribs are kind of fluid and they move as we breathe. Over time they get hard. But we see plastic skeletons and we think that's how the body's supposed to be. It's actually fluid and bones are mostly water. And then this heart here, this flows through the arms. And as Khalil Gibran wrote, work is love made visible. So if there's arm issues, it's like, are you creating and manifesting something beautiful in the world or shoulder issues? And also reaching back into the past. And I think that's it for now. That's just to give you a sense of how all these things are connected. I know this is chaotic looking. It gets more and more chaotic looking because you have the chakras, you have an in Steiner Aramonic and then uh, or Luciferic and then Aramonic forces are up here and you, you want to center yourself here and kind of spread those out. There's all kinds of subtle distinctions we can make in this body process. Like the right is future and the left is past in a uh, milne cranial sacral, etc. So I hope this helps you connect up some of those pieces and, and find the meaning behind what's going on. Thank you.